deal with troubleshooting of some of the common errors we find when creating vectors using the pen tool. We have here the simple outline of a fish and we can see as we go over it or we can select that it's been built from lots of individual paths to create the overall outline. The problem here is this is not one continuous path and we can see various problems with overlapping details, gaps and other issues. At first glance and even from a a lower level of zoom, there's not too many errors and we could get away with this as a way of representing our ideas, but the problem comes when we start to try and use this as a more of a solid shape. If we select the paths we've got so far and try to apply a fill, we can see that we are not able to create a single solid outline. The gaps and overlaps prevent this from happening, with each path being filled in its own right and not as a rather larger group. We're going to go through and we're going to correct each of the mistakes and look at what's happened. We're going to start over at the kind of the nose of the fish down this end. If we take a look at the paths that we've got here and use the direct select tool to look at the individual anchor points, we can see that while these points appear to overlap at a low level of zoom, when we get in close, there is a gap between them. If we take one of these anchor points, click on it individually, we should be able to move it to lock to the other. And we can see here guides in pink that tell us when our paths are interconnecting. The word path that's visible tells us that we have connected to that additional path. And if we release at that point, it will begin to link the two objects together. However, this V shape shows us that one stroke is ending, as is the other one, and they're not connected together at present. So while we have closed the gap, we still need to join these paths together. To do this, using the direct select tool, draw a box around both points, right click, and tap join. This will connect them together so they now form one path at this point. There are a couple more locations where this is the case. If we take this gap here we can easily see that there is a much larger void between our two anchor points. If we move one of them forward and the other one down we can close that gap and then right click and join to make sure they are one path. And this is basically a problem that we can fix in several places. Here again, we have two anchor points that are close together, but not exact. Let's snap those together, right click and join them. So far, so good. We don't have a completed shape yet, but we have two more errors to fix. One is more subtle. On this part of the fish here, we should have one smooth curve, and there's definitely a problem with that line, but we will come back to that. The other problem is here, where we've got paths that overlap and aren't connected, but one of the paths ends in a rather strange shape at the same time. So there's another problem here. Let's correct that first. If I click on this anchor point, I can see the handles that have created this curve. And the problem basically is that this handle is the one that's telling me where the curve and the line arrives from. If I move that around, I can smooth out and correct that curve to one that feels more appropriate for this part of the shape. I'm then able to move my anchor point at the end to a point that feels more appropriate. And again, just kind of iron out and soften the curve that was there before now that I've moved the anchor point. Now I can take the other anchor, connect it to the first one, and we're back to a situation where we can right click and join. So that took a bit more correction, and now we should have a single continuous path. We can check this by clicking on one part of the path and just check that the blue path under here links all the way around, it does, and we can further check it by seeing what the object looks like with a fill. And in this case, we can see there are no longer any white gaps. The final problem here is this additional kind of bend in the lower edge of the fish. It's a detail that we don't need and one that we can correct. There are two ways we could have a look at doing this. In one, we can come to the direct select tool, find that anchor point, click on it, and just see where it's creating this problem. And we have two issues here. This handle is creating a curve that ends at this anchor point, and likewise, this anchor point handle is creating a curve here. We could just straighten these out and then move this anchor point out and gradually just fine tune and finesse that until it feels like we've got a more smooth and fluid curve going from the two between the two fins of the anchor point. And if we zoom out at this stage, that is going to look okay a little bit more fine tuning on a couple more points of the design, we will get something that feels a bit more convincing. However, there is one further point. 
This anchor point is not necessary and it could be removed. Under the pen tool, if we click and hold, we get the anchor point and delete anchor point tool. In this case, if we delete this anchor point, we will still get a line that connects between these two points. So by clicking on that anchor with the delete anchor point tool, the anchor itself is gone, but the path between the other anchor points still remains. If I go to the direct select tool now, I can still use this handle to put a slight curve on that whole path. And here we've reduced the number of anchor points and it's therefore given us a smoother shape overall. When working with the pen tool, this kind of fine tuning once you've got a design that basically works is important. It can help you to get more accurate corners, put curves where you want them, angles where you want them, line things up, creating better arrangements overall. So in this case, I want to move this anchor and kind of align it with the one above a little bit more. I also want to remove a little bit of that curve so we get more of a corner here. There are plenty of ways that we can gradually fine tune a logo. Knowing your way around the direct select tool can help with all of them.